In this video, we will focus on learning how to use the Move tool in ANSYS Discovery. The Move command is a simple yet powerful tool in the Discovery toolbar. It allows you to reposition a selected object, or multiple objects, by translating in a straight line along one of three directions, or rotating about three different axes. This is the most basic explanation of what the Move tool does. In reality, it contains quite a few additional features, and mastering its use is a key piece to becoming an advanced Discovery user. In this video, we will work through several different examples for you to get a better understanding of the many capabilities contained within the Move tool. Ready? Let's get started. Open the file howtomove.dsco. Let's start the Move tool and have a look at the layout. Like most tools in Discovery, the icons within the HUD represent various different modes or actions the tool can perform. The panel on the right side of the HUD contains the Move tool options. To use the Move tool, we need to start by reviewing the Selection tool. It's critical that we select the item or items we intend to move correctly or we risk making unintended changes to the model. The move function can be applied to nearly any type of entity that exists within Discovery. This includes points, curves, edges, faces, surfaces, solid bodies, and more. Selection of these items is as simple as point and click. For very small items such as points or vertices, it may be more effective to zoom in, then click and drag a box around the point to select it. There is one item type that requires a little more attention to detail when selecting, and that is the assembly component. An assembly component has additional parent information besides just the visible geometry. This includes a unique world origin, mass properties, appearance information, etc., but the most important with regards to change in position is the component's unique world origin. Think of it as the center or zero point of the individual component. The assembly has its own separate world origin. The world origin can be used to define the direction of a force, the acceleration of gravity, or what side a certain manufacturing process will begin on. This is critical information for engineering simulations or when the model is machined in real life. Suffice to say that we don't want to make unintended changes. The component information is not automatically selected when triple clicking the body or using the box selection method. Furthermore, if we do move the body and not the entire component, its position relative to its unique world origin will change, affecting things like the coordinates of the center of mass and its moment of inertia values. We have two options for moving a component properly. The first is to simply select the component entry in the structure tree. This is fast and effective when the structure tree is small. With a large list of components, or an assembly with various levels of subcomponents, this is not effective. A better approach, in that case, is to use the Select Component mode from the Move Tool menu. With this active, we can simply click on a body and ensure that the entire component is automatically selected. Now that we've learned how to select exactly what we intend to move, we can examine the tool's capabilities. As mentioned at the start of the video, we have options for translation and rotation. These can be done manually or by entering exact values. You may have noticed that the reference point for these values is at the center of the Move tool. This point can be repositioned to various different locations to alter the outcome of the Move operation. For example, it can be placed on an outside face to make one body flush with another. 
It can also be placed on an edge or a point to serve as an axis of rotation. The anchor option will allow you to click an item and place the move tool on it, rather than manually clicking and dragging it to that location. If none of the three axes on the move tool are pointing in the desired direction for translation, we can use the move direction option. After activating this option, we can click a reference item, such as an edge or plane, to help define the move direction. Move along trajectory can be used to move an object along a path, such as a sketched curve. The item being moved does not need to be directly on the path in order to follow it. Move radially about axis allows us to position items closer or further from a common center axis. The fulcrum option gives us the ability to move an object or objects about a fixed point. This can also be used to explode assembly components. Select one object to remain stationary. In this case, we'll use Select Component and click and drag a box around the stack of rings and the post, then drag the move handle in the positive Z direction the last two options in the Move Tool menu are some of the most useful. The Up To option allows us to snap the center point on the Move Tool to a selected item's exact location. This works for points, planar faces, and to make items coaxial. It's an extremely efficient way to reposition an item, but it only moves the model along the X, Y, or Z directions. It does not handle rotation. Orient to Object allows us to rotate the model to match the orientation of a selected object. The selected reference objects will then be parallel, but they are not required to be in contact. However, this option only becomes active under one condition. To activate Orient to Object, we must select only one of the translation handles on the Move tool. Before doing this, the option is unavailable because it would be impossible to match the three active directions on the Move tool to single reference item selection. The Move tool has several other settings that can be quite useful. Symmetric Move allows us to move multiple items simultaneously about a central reference. This can be useful when increasing the size of a cut or the spacing between objects. The Ruler tool can be used to measure the offset to a selected object and drive the move using that dimension. XYZ can be used to quickly position the item using the coordinates in X, Y, and Z. As always, the center of the Move tool, indicated by the yellow sphere, or blue cube if it has been anchored, will be the point that moves to those coordinates. In the remaining options, the most commonly used option is Create Patterns, which will automatically create a pattern once we complete the initial move operation. Options will appear for the total spacing and the count of pattern instances. A quick way to duplicate items is Move Copy. If you hold Control and click and drag the Move tool, you can duplicate the selected item. This works for nearly any entity in Discovery, and can be executed while translating or rotating. One last thing to keep in mind is that the Move tool and the Pull tool share many of the same characteristics. For instance, you can use the Move tool to translate a face and extrude material much like the Pull tool would. You can also use the rotation handles to add a draft angle to a face. And if you select the perimeter of a face and rotate it, you can add twist. These are just some of the many functions that make the Move tool so useful. So, let's summarize. The Move tool allows you to translate, rotate, or essentially move one or more bodies in the working space. It also allows you to rapidly create copies or patterns of the selected objects. The Move tool can also be used to modify geometry. The final result depends on the anchor point location and the part selected. 
In the next lesson, we will take a look at the Fill tool in ANSYS Discovery.